Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. About a year or so ago, I made a video regarding the Tenorshare 4D DIG, data recovery software. This won't allow you to get data from a dead hard drive, for example, not spinning. But it was very good at recovering video files, data files, documents, and all these sort of things, photographs from hard drives that were partially working, or maybe it would spin up, but it wasn't visible in Windows, these sort of problems. And it worked very well. I mean, I demonstrated that with some files, with a lot of video files, which had been deleted, put into the recycle bin. I got them back, and another one was basically the hard drive was taking a long time to boot up. The machine would hang, eventually boot. It couldn't access the hard drive but this software could. And I know some viewers from the comments actually bought the software and even one actually sent me an email to say how pleased he was he'd solved the problem for one of his customers. Because often with a customer, it's the data that's more important than the device, yeah? So anyway, a year or so later, I decided to have a look at some other software from 4DDIG. And that's this software, the Windows Boot Genius. In this case, actually, I wasn't approached by this publisher. I approached them because I'd worked with them before and I had a computer which was having problems booting and the customer would like it to boot rather than just a fresh install of Windows. So I said, any chance I can review your software? And they said, yeah, sure. I mean, everything went well with the previous one. So let's have a look to see if this works. We can have a quick look at the main features of it. So it's for booting up computers that won't start properly, auto repair windows issues, blue screens, black screen system crashes, these sort of things. Again, recovers data from unbootable hard disks, reset windows local and domain passwords. So this is what this basically is doing. I was having these blue screen type errors and the customer asked me if I could get his system working again. This is not unusual. Sure, we could format the drive and install Windows, but he wanted to see if I could get the system working again, which I said I would try to do, okay? I mean, I would suggest after this sort of thing that you back up your data and then do a fresh install, but that's down to the customer what he wants to do. So I'm trying to get around this sort of problem and oh, stuck on loading screen, these sort of things. Okay, so let's try the software. I have at least one hard drive with this problem, maybe two we can try with, okay. And you can see how this works. So basically we download the software and we create a bootable USB. We boot from the bootable USB and we start the Windows Rescue. It's supposedly automated from there. This works on operating systems from Windows 7 upwards. You can see the various file systems it works with. Okay, some basic hardware requirements we have. It's not a problem. I'm just looking through the FAQs, and this was the one that particularly interested me. Can you create a Windows 10 recovery disk from another computer? And he says, yes, we can. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use my computer, the one you're watching now. This is the one I use for demonstrating things on the channel. We'll use this to make the USB drive, and then we will use that to see if we can recover from another machine. So let's start by downloading the software, okay? And we have a download. This is an exe file. Actually, you guys can't see it underneath me, so I'll move myself over here, okay? So you can see we have an exe file. I will put a USB drive on the machine, and let's try running this exe. Install. Start. So I'm expecting this will ask me to create a bootable USB. Yep, it's found the Toshiba Trans memory. That's the one I want to use. Uh, we'll hit create. And now it's asking me to register. So I have the full version key. So I'm just going to register that. I'll just put my details in. Obviously, I'll blur these out. Okay. Create now. Yep, it'll raise all data on it. We knew that. Continue. So 
So it says it's installing 1.18 gigabytes. This is a 16 gig drive, it's plenty big enough. I imagine you could use something like a four gig quite readily. I'm not sure you can get smaller than four gig, but there you go. Okay, that was in real time, by the way, it downloaded quite fast. Mostly there now. I'm also noting it says here we can also make a bootable DVD drive if we so wish. So we do have two options, USB or make a DVD disc. And there we have it. Let's have a quick look at the tutorials. Oh, it's just explaining here how to set the computer to boot from the USB. That much I know, so let's just go right ahead and see how well this works. This is the test rig I use when I'm repairing graphics cards or testing them. So I'm going to see if I can do anything with this hard drive. This is the USB boot drive. So let's see what this does. Machine's booting up. And it's saying insert proper boot media. Let's go into the BIOS. Okay, so there's the drive, HGST. We can see it. Boot from it. No. So it doesn't want to boot from this hard drive. Let's try the recovery software and see if that makes a difference. And you can see that the Boot Genius software is running. So from here, let's just try the automated repair. It says there's a Windows installation on here, even though it won't boot. We'll start repair. Now it's saying it could take up to 30 minutes and it says in the documentation that once you start the repair, you should not stop it because you could actually lose files or data so let's allow this to do its work and then see what happens well you can see it's doing something now so just have to let it get on with this i mean it seems to be going through quite quickly but it took like about 30 minutes to get to this point when it started doing this okay yep lots of stuff going up there and going past We pass records process, whatever that is. Okay. Okay, so it says it's updated the boot code, whatever that means exactly. I'm mean, just assuming this thing knows what it's doing. Okay. Updated with boot MGR compatible boot code. Okay, so it's done something. Let's have to see if this hard drive actually works now. Okay, so I won't press anything this time to boot from the USB. I'll just let this do its own thing. And let's see. Yeah. It's booting. It's obviously trying to load some drivers because this hard drive didn't come from this machine. It's one I had lying around for some time. I'm not exactly sure where the laptop was, but I know that it wouldn't boot. Probably got fixed with a new SSD or something, so I was just testing this out of interest. But let's see if it'll load the various drivers and run on my test rig. Well, it's restarted once by itself. I think it's now completing the setup, so... I'm hoping this will actually now boot into Windows. And yes, there we go. I'm not sure if we can log in. Depends if there's a password on it, but we're definitely in Windows. 
Okay, yeah, so there's a password date. But there we have it. It does actually work. Okay, so we can see that this software does do what it says on the tin. Now, I'm sure like any piece of software, it can't fix everything. This is designed to fix the file system on hard drives and such like to resolve these sort of problems. It's not going to be able to fix like, you know, faulty sectors and bad heads on hard drives, but that's not what it's intended to do. So from my point of view, if I can use this and I will use this to solve these sort of problems for customers, if it fixes a problem in half or three quarters of all the cases, to me, that's good profit. Yeah, I mean, the first time I fix a problem for somebody, it will pay for it anyway. And after that, it's just profit. So to me, that is a pretty useful tool. I like it because it's easy to use. I didn't have to mess around much with that. I haven't had the opportunity to try the other options like the password removal and such like, but I'm sure you will see me using this now on the channel for various jobs. And uh, if you're not convinced by today, then at the end of the day, I haven't tried everything. So I can say so far so good. I'm sure over a period of time, we can see what this can and can't do. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you use similar software, comments below. And I look forward to seeing you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.